Hello friends, welcome to my channel Financial Fitness with CA Ashima Able Films. There could be a plethora of reasons why some NRIs do not like to return to India once they move abroad. Well, I, being an NRI, am surely not one of those. But everyone have their own likes and dislikes and have different preferences and perspectives in life. When it comes to the reasons for not returning to India, there is a joke which is quite popular amongst the NRI community, which goes like this. Why most of the NRIs refuse to return to India? The answer they would come up with is because they heard that the Indian traffic was so bad that even the Google Maps said, stay where you are, it's safer. Well, these jokes never hurt the sentiments of Indians abroad, but Gently poke fun at the social customs and beliefs they cling on to and at the same time trying to make a vain bid to convert themselves into a local citizen of their adopted country, which could be an alien to Indian values and culture. For those who move abroad and continue to live there, whether they live in a foreign country for the rest of their lives or only for a limited number of years, there may be times when you need to transfer your funds from India to the country where you reside and in some cases where the parents and their children abroad for higher studies, the parents or other relatives back in India being residents might also send funds to their children who are studying abroad. Or there could be instances of foreign tour packages, providing loans or sending gifts to relatives living abroad, buying stocks of foreign companies, purchasing property abroad or immigrants remitting funds to their own foreign bank accounts. This video is about repatriation of funds abroad by residents as well as by NRIs. I'm going to throw some light on the FEMA requirements that one should be aware of. What are the options and schemes that are available for residents and for NRIs to repatriate funds abroad? Liberalized remittance scheme, which is applicable for residents. $1 million scheme, which is applicable for NRIs. We will also look into the tax implications on foreign remittances under these schemes as well. So make sure you watch this video to the end so that you don't miss on any part of the information shared in this video. But before we begin, I would like to request you all to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's totally free. You can just log in on YouTube with your email ID and click on the subscribe icon and share it with your family and friends. You can also share it in the WhatsApp groups in your phones. I will just take a quick pause for only 5 seconds so you all can take time to click on the subscribe icon, like icon and also click on the bell icon that you will find below the video. Please do that while I wait for just 5 seconds. Okay, so now I'll quickly introduce myself for the new viewers. I am CA Ashima, a professionally qualified chartered accountant, a certified auditor and a certified ERP implementation specialist specializing in tax, finance, IT and audits. I have worked as a partner and a director with one of the top 25 leading CA firms in India, which has also been a member firm of one of the big fours. After working in India for a period of 10 years, I moved to Sweden and have also worked as a senior financial consultant with a multinational and catered to clients in Sweden, Finland, Norway, Denmark and the UK. I have also worked as a freelance financial consultant. Now let's begin with the legal framework for administration of foreign exchange transactions in India, which is provided by the Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999, commonly known as FEMA which came into force with effect from June 1, 2000. FEMA is a regulatory mechanism that enables the Reserve Bank of India to pass regulations and the central government to pass rules relating to foreign exchange in tune with the foreign trade policy of India. As an NRI, you can continue maintaining your financial relationship with your homeland through remittances and investments. Such financial exchange across borders is governed by FEMA guidelines the rules under FEMA apply to your bank accounts, investments, purchase of immovable properties, repatriation, income as a student, and foreign currency exchange. The primary rule as per FEMA for NRIs pertains to bank accounts. Once you become an NRI, you cannot transact through resident savings bank accounts. And if you continue to do so, then you might attract a penalty. You must either close or convert them into an NRI bank account. The bank accounts you can open as an NRI include non-resident ordinary account, which is known as NRO account, non-resident external account, which is known as NRE account, and foreign currency non-resident FCNR account. An NRO account is designed to manage your income originating from India. 
An NRA account lets you maintain your foreign income in India. And lastly, an FCNR account stores your foreign income in the original currency without conversion. Now let's understand different types of transactions under FEMA. All transactions involving foreign exchange have been classified either as capital or current account transactions under FEMA. All transactions undertaken by a resident that do not alter their assets or liabilities, including contingent liabilities outside India are current account transactions. Now let's look into the schemes available for repatriation of funds abroad. Let's first understand what is liberalized remittance scheme that is applicable for residents. Under the liberalized remittance scheme, commonly referred to as LRS, all resident individuals, including minors, are allowed to freely remit up to an amount equivalent to US dollar 250,000 per financial year, which is April 1st of April to 31st March for any permissible current or capital account transaction or a combination of both. In case of remitter being a minor, the LRS declaration form must be countersigned by the minor's natural guardian. The scheme is not available to corporates, partnership firms, HUF, trust, etc. and is only available to resident individuals including minors. Now let's understand what are the requirements to be complied with by the remitter. The individual will have to designate a branch of the AD Bank where AD stands for Authorized Dealer which are authorized by the Reserve Bank of India to deal in foreign exchange for specified purposes through which all the capital account remittances under the scheme will be made. The applicants should have maintained the bank account with the bank for a minimum period of one year prior to the remittance. The applicant will have to submit all the details pertaining to the nature of transaction in Form A2 to the AD Bank. Now let's look into the tax implications on remittances made under LRS. Budget 2023 had raised the tax collection at source, which is TCS, on foreign remittances through liberalized remittance scheme to 20% from the existing 5%, except in certain cases. The increase in TCS rates to 20%, which were to come into effect from 1st July 2023, shall now come into effect from 1st of October 2023. There is an exemption from TCS up to a maximum of Rs 7 lakhs if the money is sent for educational, medical or any expenses other than overseas tool package. To know more about how LRS scheme works and FAQs on LRS, you can watch my next video which would be solely dedicated to the FAQs on the LRS scheme. Now let's understand what is $1 million scheme. To enable the NRIs to remit their money to their foreign account, the Reserve Bank of India introduced the $1 million scheme. NRIs can remit amounts up to $1 million US dollar per financial year, which is from 1st April to 31st of March, out of balances held in their NRO account, subject to prescribed conditions. $1 million scheme can be used by NRI, which is non-resident Indian citizen, or a PIO, which is person of Indian origin, or OCI, who is an overseas citizen of India, as well as by a foreign national. This scheme is not applicable to a resident citizen of India. For residents, only LRS is applicable. To know more about how $1 million scheme works, what documents are required and other important points, you can watch my next video which would be solely dedicated to the FAQs on $1 million scheme. So friends, now it's time to wrap up this video. To know more about other requirements like what documentation is required for foreign remittances under LRS as well as $1 million scheme and other FAQs on foreign remittances, you can watch my next videos which will hopefully come up very soon. You can also watch my other videos where I have shared information about tax benefits for returning NRIs like RNOR tax status and other tax benefits for NRIs on sale of property in India and many other videos related to financial planning and investments which are not only relevant for NRIs but for all others as well. I hope you all will benefit with the information shared in this video and if you find this information useful, then please make sure you click on the like icon. Please do subscribe right now if you haven't done that yet. You just need to log in with your email ID on YouTube to subscribe. That's it. It's totally free for all. 
So do it right now. Subscribe, like, and share. Share it with your family and friends. And do share it in the WhatsApp groups in your phones as well. Thank you and bye-bye.